guys, in this video, I'm going to go through a practice problem where I go through an example of placing a subsidy on a producer in perfect competition. So I do have a video that explains just the theoretical side of it. It goes at a slower pace. It is a good background for this video if you need extra help. And so I'll link to it in the description and in the corner. Also in this video, it is quite long because it's a long problem. I go from start to finish, including welfare analysis. So I've just divided it up into sections and you might consider skipping to a particular section depending on what you're after. Those sections are listed in the description. Okay, otherwise let's start. In the problem that I'm looking at today, I have a market demand curve QD is equal to 180 minus 3P and a market supply curve QS is equal to 2P minus 20. So the first thing I'm going to do is to draw these curves out and I'm going to start with thinking about our demand curve and to draw the demand curve I'm just going to isolate the price and quantity axis intercepts. To look at the price axis intercept first I'm going to set QD is equal to zero. If I do that I can solve for the price by adding 3P to both sides dividing by 3 and I get the price is equal to 60. So that's our intercept there. Our quantity axis intercept I can find by setting P is equal to zero and that's actually really easy. We just get 180, which is our Q axis intercept. To draw the supply curve, I'm going to find the price axis intercept by setting QS is equal to zero. So I get zero is equal to 2P minus 20. Let's add 20 to both sides and divide by two and I get P is equal to 10. So I know that my supply curve actually comes out from this intercept here at P is equal to 10. I do need another point to anchor this supply curve. So I do know it comes up like this. What I will do in this case, and it's just my shorthand way of doing it, I'm going to find the intersection point with our demand curve, which is actually our equilibrium point. So we need to find that anyway, and that's going to be my second point to anchor my supply curve. So in our pre-subsidy equilibrium, we're looking for the point where our quantity supplied is equal to our quantity demanded. And I'm just going to substitute in my formula here for our demand curve and our supply curve. And once I do that, I get 2P minus 20 is equal to 180 minus 3P. If I add 20 to both sides, And if I add 3p to both sides, I get 200 is equal to 5p. Dividing both sides by 5, we get p is equal to 40. So that's our p star, that's our pricing equilibrium. To find our quantity, we can substitute p is equal to 40 into either my demand or supply curve because they're both equal at this point. I'm going to choose to put it into my supply curve just because it's an easy function. So I get my quantity supplied is equal to 2 times where 40 minus 20 is equal to 60. And that's equal to our equilibrium quantity Q star. So I can put those up on the graph here and that point can act as our anchor for our supply curve because we know that the supply curve goes through that point. All right, good. So we should just look quickly at our welfare situation prior to the imposition of the subsidy. Our consumer surplus is this area here below our demand curve above the price. We can find the area of this triangle, it will be half times base, which is 60 and height, which is 60 minus 40 is 20. So once I figure that out, the consumer surplus is 600. Our producer surplus is this area here, the area above the supply curve below the price. The area of this section will be half times our base, which is again 60, and the height, which is 40 minus 10, which is equal to 30. So the producer surplus is equal to, well, it will be 900. So our total surplus is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus, which is equal to 600 plus 900, which is 1,500. All right, so now we can think about the subsidy. And in my example here, let's say that the government gives the producers $10 per unit they trade. So it's a $10 per unit subsidy applied to the producers. The overall price that the producer gets per unit, and we can call that PP, is going to be equal to the amount 
per unit that they get from the customer. So let's call that PC, that can be the price that the consumer pays. But then the producer gets an additional amount, which is the amount of the subsidy. Since in my example here, the subsidy is equal to 10, we get PP is equal to PC plus 10. The subsidy is going to change our supply curve and actually I'm expecting it to shift down by exactly the amount of the subsidy. And this is because the minimum price, which will incentivize the producer to make any quantity has reduced by exactly 10. You can also think about it as a decrease in marginal cost. So I'm expecting it to come down like this. So I'll move that stuff to the right and let's think about the algebra. Algebraically, there are a couple of ways which we can think about it. Our old supply curve, remember, was QS is equal to 2P minus 20. But we're going to have a new supply equation, and let's call this QS prime, is equal to, well now we're differentiating between the producer's price PP, right? So we have 2 times PP minus 20. What we're going to do now is substitute PP is equal to PC plus 10 into our new equation, and this is going to enable us to write the supply curve in terms of the price the consumer sees, and this will give us the market price, the market equilibrium. So opening this out, we get 2PC plus 20 minus 20, which is just equal to 2 times PC. And we have our new supply. This is going to help us find the consumer's price that occurs at the new equilibrium. So our new supply curve post-subsidy actually it's going to be QS prime is equal to 2PC. The intercept of this curve is actually zero. And so our new supply curve comes out from the origin. It has the same slope as our original. And this is a shift down of exactly 10, which is exactly what we expected. This will tell us the consumer's price and our new quantity. All right, so post subsidy equilibrium is going to be at the intersection of our new supply curve QS prime and our old demand curve QD. After substituting, we get 2PC is equal to 180 minus 3PC. So I am interpreting the price in the demand curve as PC, and that's fine because that's exactly what a demand curve tells us about the relationship between the price the consumer pays and the quantity that they demand. So adding 3PC to both sides, we get 5PC is equal to 180, and we get that consumer's price is 36. So I can put that on the diagram here. To find the quantity, we substitute price is equal to 36 into either our old demand curve or our new supply. I'm just going to put it into our new supply, which is QS prime. So I get 2 times PC, which is 2 times 36, that's equal to 72. And I'll call that Q prime, and that can be our new equilibrium quantity after we impose the subsidy. The last thing that we need to think about is the producer's price per unit. And we know that that's equal to the amount that the consumer pays, which is 36 plus 10, so it's 46. Visually, we can go up like this, and that will be PP here. Remember that the vertical distance between our two supply curves is exactly 10. Lastly, we should just think about what's happened to our welfare. And we have a third player now, which is the government, and we need to take that into consideration. So the cost of the government is going to be S times Q prime, which is 10 times 72, which is equal to 720. And that's because for every unit traded, which is 72, the government is giving the producers $10. So the total cost is 10 times 72. Visually, it's actually going to be this rectangle here. You'll have a base length of 72 and a height of 10. Our consumer surplus is this area here, below our demand curve, above the consumer's price. Again, that's going to be the area of the triangle, so half times base, which is 72, and the height, which is 60 minus 36, is equal to 24, and I have solved that here and I got 864. Our producer surplus is this area here, above the supply curve, below the price that the suppliers get, that's PP. The area will be half times our base, which is 72, times the height, which is 46 minus 10, which is 36. So the producer surplus is all equal to 36 times 72 divided by 2, which is 1,296. 
Now our total surplus is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus, but now we have to minus the cost to the government. So it's 864 plus 1,296 minus 720, which is equal to 1,440. Our dead weight loss is actually this part here. It's equal to half times our base is 12, and that's because our base is 72 minus 60 and 10, that's the height. So 12 times 10 divided by two is equal to 60. There are a few interesting interpretations of the dead weight loss. The first way to interpret dead weight loss is to note that as the result of the subsidy, we're producing 72 units. And before we were only producing 60. But if you have a look for the units between 60 and 72, the marginal cost of production, which is measured by our supply curve, is above the marginal benefit of consumption, which is measured by our demand curve. So for all the units we're producing above 60, the costs are higher than the benefits. So that's bad. And so we are essentially going to add up the differences between the costs and the benefits for each of these units. And the total of that sum is our dead weight loss. The second way to see our dead weight loss is to see it as a reduction in the total surplus compared to when we did not have the subsidy. So recall that our previous total surplus was equal to 1,500. Now you can see here that the total surplus after the subsidy is 1,440. The difference between them is indeed 60 and that's one way to see our dead weight loss. The last way to look at our dead weight loss is just to have a look at our diagram and see it as the proportion of the government injection, the government cost that is, that essentially got lost or didn't get transferred to consumer or producer surplus. To see this, let's have a look at our consumer surplus prior to the subsidy, which would have been here, and we can compare it to the consumer surplus after the subsidy, which is here, and we can see that our consumer surplus has increased by this much. Our producer surplus has, in comparing before the subsidy and then after, has increased by this much. You can see the rectangle that was the cost to the government, that's the injection of funds into the market by the government, where we can see that as partly going to the consumers in terms of additional consumer surplus, partly going to the producers in terms of additional producer surplus. And then there is this part here, which has not been transferred at all, it's just been wasted, and that's our dead, dead weight loss. So that graph's a bit messy, so I'm sorry. I hope that that's clear and you understand it. And that's it, that's it for the question. It is a pretty long one, because uh, you, you have to kind of start from the beginning and do all the welfare and, and all the calculations, but I hope that that helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Have a lovely night.